Today we're going to be here at Universal Studios Florida where we're going to be talking about the history of the ghost with the most, BJ, Mr. Beetlejuice. Hi everybody and welcome to the world of Micah. That's right, today we're going to be here at Universal Studios Florida talking about the history of Beetlejuice. I've said it twice. Now all I have to do is say it one more time and he might appear. Hmm. I'll save that for later on in the episode. But Mr. BJ, the ghost with the most, has been at Universal since its humble beginnings in the year 1990. We're going to be traveling around and finding where his old stomping grounds, his old haunts used to be. Different shows, different appearances, all things pertaining to the ghost with the most. You guys ready? It's showtime. Let's take a closer look. Now our first stop of the day is going to be here at the New York Public Library, which is just a facade, but on these steps right here is where BJ and the Ghostbusters had several shows together. In fact, they had three different shows. They had BJ Dead in Concert, not saying his full name just yet. They also had Street Busters. Then, they finally had the Extreme Ghostbusters, The Great Frightway. That was the last show they had here with the Ghost with the Most and the Ghostbusters. We're going to start off with BJ, Dead in Concert, which opened during Fright Nights in the year 1991. I'll show you guys what the Ghost with the Most looked like. He had a top hat, a microphone. Basically, this show was how they got the idea for the Graveyard Review, which we will talk about later on. But it was the Ghost with the Most and the Ghostbusters covering some songs, some classic songs. I believe he possessed the Ghostbusters. And it all happened right here on this stage. You can see in the photograph, he was standing right about there, pointing out to the audience. Then later on in the show, the Ectomobile, the Ecto-1, would be pulling straight through and the Ghostbusters would join BJ right up here on this stage. In fact, the photograph that I'm about to show you was right about here. You can see the Ghostbusters, BJ, and even a cardboard cutout of the Ghost with the Most on stage. And yes, I know a lot of people are going to be blowing up the comment section. That is, in fact, Wayne Brady portraying Winston in this show. Wayne Brady got his his starts as an actor and a performer here at Universal Studios Florida. Pretty cool, right? But yeah, right here on these steps, and you can still walk up to these steps and walk all around in here. It's a full-blown facade. A lot of people use it to, to take a seat and enjoy their snacks, but right here was a stage with the ghost with the most. This was used as a stage. You can see the Ectomobile, the Ecto-1 pulling in right here, parking here. They had bleachers set up right over there. There were bleachers that were set up you could stand. Most people just stood around here and watched. And that was one of the first shows right here. BJ dead in concert. Now I couldn't find anything on when it ended. I know it started with Fright Nights, but it went on for a little while because the photographs that I found were taken in the year 1992. I think this kind of segued into Street Busters, which was a seasonal show that opened in 1991. So it had to have started around the same time and it was a different seasonal version of this show. So maybe during Fright Nights they had Dead in Concert and then during the regular off season of Halloween Horror Nights, which was Fright Nights at the time. It was not called Halloween Horror Nights just yet they had Street Busters. Now Street Busters was here from 1991 all the way up to the year 1993. The plot was the Ghostbusters were trying to catch their biggest foe, the ghost with the most. We're gonna find some photographs that took place still on this same area, New York Public Library, the facade. So now let's take a closer look at what BJ looked like during Street Busters. There's a photograph I can compare him standing right over here and he was wearing a hat that was very interesting it was a Mickey Mouse Club hat it was like a baseball cap with the Mickey ears on it and it had the Mickey Mouse Club logo right in the front but he had slashed through it 
with like an anti-mouse logo. Very interesting. That was kind of like a, a running joke here in Orlando. You know, they always talked about the mouse down the street and like in horror makeup show, this isn't Disney World, I don't have to be nice to the kids. You know, there's there's always been a running joke back and forth. It's, it's all in good fun. But right here is where BJ was standing. You can see him with that hat talking to the crowd and the Street Busters original show. Now, after that, there's a photograph I found right here with the Ghostbusters talking to BJ. That's right, them talking to BJ during the show. He's still wearing the, the Mickey Mouse Club hat. Now, after Street Busters, from October 2002 to February of 2005, there was a show here called Extreme Ghostbusters, The Great Fright Way. And the Ghostbusters, well... At this point in the park, we're not looking like the, the normal Ghostbusters you grew up with. They, they, they still kind of had nods to those original characters of Ray Stance and, and Winston, but they, they had different outfits, different color jumpsuits, and they some of them would wear hats, like a cowboy hat. And it wasn't my favorite look of the Ghostbusters here. If I was a kid and I came and saw this version of the, uh, of the Ghostbusters, I'd be like, who are these guys? And, and what have you done with Ray Stance? You know, but nonetheless, there was a show here called Extreme Ghostbusters, The Great Fright Way with our friend BJ, the ghost with the most. We'll show you guys what that show looked like and see for yourself what the Ghostbusters were looking like in these days. You guys can see him wearing the crown in the photograph. He was standing right up there gagging himself at the audience wearing the <laughs> Statue of Liberty headpiece. I believe later on he would remove that. But that's where the photograph was taken. And then the other photograph was taken right here where I'm standing. He brought the audience up and they stood right here and did a almost like the Rockettes dance. I'll show you guys what that looked like. And this was an audience participation show. So BJ brought up some, some audience members to help him do the famous Rockettes kicking dance. They were standing right there. You can see in the photograph, everyone got to, to hop on the stage and why not? It was just a sidewalk. I thought it was pretty genius to use this New York Public Library facade as a stage. And then the Ghostbusters finally showed up and here they are on stage with BJ standing right about here. Now see BJ is no longer wearing the Statue of Liberty headpiece, but take a look at the Ghostbusters. Doesn't really look like the Ghostbusters you grew up with. These were the extreme Ghostbusters, which means they could have extreme different clothing options, I guess. The cowboy hat still, <laughs> still kills me to this day. What's interesting about this stage in this whole area is it's just like the opening of Ghostbusters with the Lions and the New York Public Library. So it ties in very well with them. And plus, when you're walking into the park, it was very easy to see this whole area. So it was very eye-catching. But to this day, if you decide to, to come here, you can actually walk up on the steps and look at what this facade looks like. You can see what this really looks like back here. It's all accessible to the guest. That's pretty insane, right? That's what the, the back of this facade looks like. You can't go past there. That'll take you to the backstage area, but pretty cool to see an old BJ and Ghostbusters stage. This is where they would stand and do the show. So you can kind of get a feel of what it's like to be a Ghostbuster or be the ghost with the most. So basically from 1991 to 2005, you could have seen some version of the ghost with the most with the Ghostbusters right here on the New York Public Library facade. All in that area, there's a lot of history between those two franchises.
But during 1990 to 2005, there were some other places that you could find the ghost with the most in this park. And if you want to know more about the history of the Ghostbusters here at Universal, I did a video a long time ago talking about their history. That link is above right now. Check it out. But let's continue with our journey. Now another stomping ground of the ghost with the most and the Ghostbusters was right here at the Priscilla Hotel for single young ladies. Now the show that took place here was called Ghostbusters House Call. I could not find really any history of this show, like when it started, when it ended, but I did find some, some photographs. The show would begin with the ghost with the most right up top. Right up there. That's right, you can see the ghost with the most right up there. As you can see in the photograph, he was standing there between those two chains. It's pretty interesting. That's where the show would start. I think he was kind of getting the crowd routed up and ready for the show. And everything else pretty much took place right here on this stoop. You can see in this photograph, I'll move right over here, the Ghostbusters. The lady performer. We're all standing right here in front of this stoop. Very interesting. I know nothing about this show. Only saw a video of it. Basically, they got a call. The Ghostbusters pulled up, went inside, and I think they trapped BJ. And they came out. The crowd was standing all around here. They applauded the Ghostbusters. <laughs> And that was pretty much it, as far as I could see from the show. Yeah, Ghostbusters house call. Very rare, not very much talked about show here at Universal Studios Florida. But this is where it took place, the Priscilla Hotel, right next to Finnegan's. And right across from, at the time, would have been Confrontation, but now Revenge of the Mummy Coaster. So the next time you come over here, just think about BJ living there or at least taking over this hotel for single young ladies and the Ghostbusters coming to save the day. Now I did find a meet and greet location for the ghost with the most that took place right over here. He was standing somewhere in this area. You can look behind BJ and the random guest who was meeting with him. This was from the Magic of Movies, the hosted by John Forsyth special they had here in the park. I'll put a link to the filming locations that I did of that, but this is where they were, they were standing. Now in the year 1991, Universal had their very first Fright Nights, which was Halloween Horror Nights, the original name for Halloween Horror Nights. And recently I did a video talking about the history of the Psycho House in the Bates Motel here at Universal Studios Florida. That link is above, but during Fright Nights, they would utilize the Bates Motel and the Psycho House. They had a show here, saving that that last name drop for later on in the, the episode. But it took place right over here, and it was with our friends, the Blues Brothers, Elvis, I believe Marilyn Monroe was here as well. And he was giving a, a, a tour of the graveyard. Lots of music, dance numbers, it was pretty cool. Short-lived, very short-lived. Not sure when exactly it ended. It might have just been for the one year, 1991, here at Fright Nights, but there is some history with the ghost with the most and Norman Bates. Now, I found this meet and greet to be very, very, very interesting as far as history goes because not only could you meet BJ, but you could meet Lydia. Right over here in front of Mel's drive-in, they were standing around in this area signing autographs. We had a Lydia in this park at one point. Mind blowing, right? They were standing here taking some photographs and signing autographs for fans. And also, right over here is where Lydia was standing, signing an autograph. What's very interesting about this meet and greet is in the photograph, look to the right of Lydia, you can see a car. That car is right here. The 32 Deuce Coupe, still here in the park. 
which means right here is where Lydia was standing signing an autograph. How incredible is that? Lydia Dietz at Universal Studios, Florida. Don't know how long this character was here, but she's no longer meeting and, and greeting here at Universal. Well, I think it's time. Say it once, say it twice. Third time's a charm. Beetlejuice. That's three times. It's showtime. Let's head inside the Pantages Theater, home of the Universal Horror Makeup Show, where Beetlejuice is the opening MC for this show nowadays. Come on, let's go see him. Having a pretty good time. Uh, there's websites for this. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, you know, I work with what you give me, you know, which is a lot. It's okay, I don't judge. How are you guys doing? It's Beetlejuice. I'm here. Lastly, there's a little bit of audience participation with this show, so I have to test out what your horror scream is like. So on three, give me your best scream. Ready? One, two, three! Ah! That sucked! Mm. All right, let's do that again. I want you to scream, but think of me like you just saw me in a bikini! Ah! It's showtime. Ah! Let's walk over to the former home of Beetlejuice's Rockin' Graveyard Review. Everyone knows this show. The Beetlejuice Show, right over here. It's the Fast and the Furious Supercharged, but from May of 1992 to January 5th, 2016, you could have seen Beetlejuice in the classic monsters, the classic universal monsters, that is, in the Beetlejuice Rock and Roll Graveyard Review. Now this show went through many different changes and versions of the show, but it all was based around the same premises. Beetlejuice is your host, the host with the most, the ghost with the most also. And he brought out some of his classic monster friends to sing and dance and perform for you. It's pretty amazing, pretty, an, pretty awesome show. Had a huge cult following this show. Lots of people flocked every day to see this show and some people are still very sad it's gone this guy included let's let's see what it used to look like when this was the home of the ghost with the most so right up here this is the original fountain from when this was Beetlejuice's graveyard review and right about here that's where the photograph was taken you can see the banners hanging with Dracula, the Wolfman, Beetlejuice, Frankenstein, and Bride of Frankenstein. Sure do miss this show. It's now the home of Fast and the Furious, Supercharged, Nothing Remains, the stage, everything has been completely bulldozed, destroyed. There's a few things in this area that do remain the same. We'll find those now. For one, the fountain. The fountain has not changed. Still the same fountain. Now this, this stand right here was Graveyard Snacks for many years. Now it is San Francisco Snacks. But the architecture, the colors, everything is still the same from when this was the Graveyard Review. Lots of green, lots of black, lots of white, lots of purple too. In fact, before this food truck showed up, there was a stand, a horse carriage that sat here for years and years and years that had the Beetlejuice colors on it, the black, the white stripes, and the purple and green. But it's been replaced with this food truck. And right here was the old Beetlejuice's graveyard review sign. It's where the attraction information sign is now. As you can see in the photograph, that's what it looked like. Very classic. Had a picture of Beetlejuice and all the classic monsters that were in the show. Nowadays, if you visit, you will see this. There's a slab of concrete from the old sign. And it's an electronic attractions information sign. Like I said, lots of changes, but lots of things still remain kind of the same in this area. 
And in 2016, I was kind of worried. I was thinking that was the end of Beetlejuice in the park. Well, I was wrong. Beetlejuice started popping up on Hollywood Boulevard doing meet and greets. Met him several times. He would kind of pop up all throughout the New York area and Hollywood area of Universal. Then, when the park shut down and reopened, they put him over the horror makeup show like we saw earlier and last year. Amidst the craziness of what was 2020, Universal had something very exciting happen. They brought the ghost with the most back to Halloween Horror Nights. That's right, Halloween Horror Nights 30th is getting, once again, a Beetlejuice house. And when I say once again, last year, 2020, they opened up the Beetlejuice house, the haunted house, for a short time. I didn't even get to go through it. That's how quick this was. Filled up very quickly, virtual queue, the whole thing. But they announced, that was one of the first houses they announced for this year, Halloween Horror Nights 2021. The Beetlejuice Haunted House. I'm looking forward to it. I know you guys are looking forward to it. It's gonna be such a huge hit. You know, this guy has been in this park for over 30 years. That says something about a ghost, especially a dead guy, you know? I'm a huge fan. I'm sure you guys are too. This was a lot of fun today, you guys. I feel like Beetlejuice is kind of the unsung hero here at Universal Studios. Lots of fans here. I see people dressing up all the time when I'm visiting the parks. I see them either dressing as Lydia or Beetlejuice or both. Lots of Beetlejuice shirts, merchandise around in the park. Sometimes you really are more popular once you're dead. Well, you guys, this was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun traveling around and kind of following in the footsteps of the old stomping grounds of the ghost with the most, Beetlejuice. Who knows what the future will lie for Beetlejuice here in this park, but I have a feeling that that guy is not going anywhere anytime soon. He's just too popular, and hey, he's been here since the beginning. Why get rid of a good thing? But I think our adventure for today has come to an end, which means it's time to say goodbye. If you enjoyed this episode, please click the thumbs up button. Sorry I didn't do this video in chronological order. It's just kind of all over the place where they had Beetlejuice. So basically I will say from the year 1991, June of 90, when this place opened, he was around. But let's just say 1991 to 2021, Beetlejuice has had a very, very, very heavy <laughs> impact on this park. He's a staple, but it is time to say goodbye and I will see you guys on the next adventure the next time you're here at Universal Studios Florida. Tell them World of Micah sent you and the next time you see Beetlejuice, tell him I sent you as well. See you guys on the next adventure. Until then, stay weird. Goodbye.